President General Sanko Kim Mayardit, Dr. Ryan Majan, David Yao Yao, for immediate ceasefire, so as to create an atmosphere of dialogue. Three, urge the SPLM leadership to initiate a peaceful dialogue with all the conflicting groups in the spirit of South-South dialogue. <coughs> we plead to the organized forces to refrain from victimizing innocent people, but adhere to human rights norms and protect all citizens in South Sudan, regardless of their ethnicity or origin. We further appeal that the government of South Sudan utilizes the enormous peace-building potential of women in resolving the current political unrest. <coughs> Finally, in conclusion, we would like to reiterate that independence to the women means inter alia peace, unity, reconciliation, development, and prosperity for all the people of South Sudan. Long live peace and unity of South Sudan. Long live the Republic of South Sudan. God bless South Sudan. And thanks for your audience. Merry Christmas and prosperous, peaceful, and peaceful. Excellency, President Salfa Kirma Yadi, President of the Republic of South Sudan, Vice President Wanayiga, Federal Ministers, Specialized Committee Chairman, Deputy Chairman, Ladies and Gentlemen, Protocol is in order, there is no problem, the one who is not mentioned is assumed to have been mentioned. <laughs> Our black country, South Sudan, is facing national security threat, as all of us know what happened last Sunday, 15 December 2013. We passed the transitional constitution, the South 2011, based on democratic system of governance. All of us need to protect this constitution. As we believe in the democracy, no need for war. As all of us know, we have been fighting for almost five decades to achieve our country now, we've got our country. It is a constitutional mandate and a constitutional decision to remove one out of power. The chairman of the coup, in his request, our president be out of power as his condition for negotiation. It is a pity to hear such utterance from a chairman of self Kalim Coup. President Sal Fakir is mandated by the people of South Sudan to rule them. Nobody besides the people of the South to make such power take such power from him. <laughs> Only the people of the South who gave him the power. Nobody had the right to do that. Only the entire people of the Southern people. Let us that power is not attained through lies and unfaithfulness. <laughs> it 
if you want power, let him prepare himself to contest. He is trying to rock the boat, which is being led by our faithful President Salpakir Mayaki. We need to respect the government we establish not to violate and not to violate our constitution. We need to be, we need to protect our country, South Sudan, and not destroy it. Not need, no need for war. Democracy is our dream in forming a good governance in this country. We strongly denounce this political violence, this barbaric act should be, should be weeded out and should be dismissed by the entire people of the southern people. We are in need of development and prosperity. No for war, no for war, no for war. <laughs> Political issue is resolved through dialogue. Dialogue, not violence. Dialogue, not killing innocent people and children. Now our government announced its readiness to dialogue. We, as parliamentarians, support the president to restore peace and stability in our black country. I'm not here to lecture to you, to read long speeches, but the symbol of the unity of the southern people is here with you today. You will hear what he has come here for to impart it to you. We have today in the upper house, in the legislature, one of our faithful brothers, one of our faithful children, president of this country, mandated by the entire people of the South Sudan, to lead them and direct them in their development and in their welfare. I hereby call upon him to give his briefing on the current political situation of the country to the honorable members of the legislature. Therefore, I call upon the country to come and give you Right Honorable Manazuma Gawundial, Speaker of the National Legislative Assembly, all the members of the legislature, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful to be with you today for this important moment as we are approaching Christmas and the New Year celebrations. Christmas to you all. I wish, I wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Of course, the Christmas will not be the same as the other Christmas that we have been celebrating. Because we will celebrate Christmas this year while mourning our dear ones that we have lost in this senseless war that we have fought. 
I am also grateful to all of you for the great support that you have shown as members of this August House, the two houses I mean, during this crisis and so that we can restore the instability which was disrupted by those who are power thirsty, who had wanted to take power by force in a military coup. Mr. Speaker, sir, as we are all conscious of that darkest night of the attempted coup on Sunday, December 15, in the history of our new nation, and the despicable atrocities that are conflicted on our citizens in Juba, and which are described to some areas like Bor, Akobo, and other places. I felt morally obliged to come to your noble house to brief you both on the facts of the coup and the steps that are taken by this government. The activities and intentions of this group who attempted the military overthrow of the government started earlier this month when I left for the official visit to France. Of course, it was not the first time that it started, and I will come to that. The group that attempted the coup, led by Dr. Yir Machar, convened in the SPLM house here in Juba on the 6th of December 2013. That was just the day after I had departed from Juba. They held a press conference attacking and challenging my executive powers. However, if you could look at the background of this group, you will automatically find that they were my former ministers, most of them, and some governors, and I will have to be uh, very precise in this. The ministers who lost their positions <coughs> during the last reshuffle. Most of them are the ones now involved. And those who are now under arrest were all the ministers, maybe one governor, one former governor, and one former ambassador. This is not the way we expected to, to change power in our hands. Some are sitting here with us, but they were deeply involved. We are not arresting them, not because we don't know them. We know that they knew they were there, but they don't see how good it is and how bad it is. They knew it was bad, this is why they did not participate in action. Because it, 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 is, it is also very sweet to talk about war, but it is not good to do it to yourself. I would like to, to continue with this, that my colleagues were publicly out to take power 
And then after the conference in the SPLM house, they proposed day 14 to be the next day that they will hold a public rally and they were going to go to Nyapuran Cultural Center. You all know that the time when I left here was the time President Nelson Mandela died in South Africa. And when I came back, I had to go for the funeral of this great man, as all the world leaders were assembling in South Africa to pay their last respects to the icon of the liberation. This one, I came on the 8th, which was Sunday, and I left on the 9th, I went to, to South Africa. We had already fixed, when I left, we were supposed to meet in the National Liberation Council on the 9th of December. But when I came on the 8th, I had to proceed on the 9th, and I pushed the day back to 14. I came back from South Africa through Kenya. Because Kenyans were also celebrating the 50th anniversary of their independence, their golden jubilee. And I was also invited. So I had to make a stopover to attend the celebrations on the 12th of December. Soon after the celebration on the 12th, I came back to Juba hoping that on the 13th Friday we would start the, the meeting if, the, if people were in a hurry and that I was mindful about the delegates that came from, from far states and the people of, uh, of the staff of the SPLM were always uh, worried about the expenses that they were incurring. So I had wanted this thing to be done quickly so that uh, the delegates that came from the state had to go back to their states. But my colleagues who remained behind told me that it would be better to be on the 14th. They have put it to the 14th, which was good. Now the same 14th was then the fix for the date of the, of the rally of the group. Late in the evening or early morning before we could go to Nyapur, we found that the group has issued uh, a press statement saying that they have uh, postpone the rally to the day that they will fix. They were responding according to the, to the press to the call of the best wishes uh, those who would want to maintain peace within the SPR. <coughs> So on the 14th, we went and started the NLC meeting, which was not interrupted by anybody. And the meeting went on with the participation of all members of the NLC, including the breakaway group. In the evening, at around 6 p.m., we closed after having passed the manifesto as the one first basic document that has been passed by the National Liberation Council. 
we agreed that we will come back the following day, which was Sunday, at 3, giving, how do you call that, more mini? Well, uh, you know, the faithful. Giving the faithful, you know, the time to go and, and worship. And that will come at 3. Yes, we came at 3. But the group was not there. It, they boycotted the meeting. And also, we, we, we did not just start. The group that came in, we were wondering whether this group will come or they will stay away. For us to, to go on, we decided to take the roll call so that we know how many were present and how many were not present given the number of the members of the National Liberation Council. <coughs> when we counted ourselves, we found that we were 128 present. The whole total number of the NLC members was 136. Subtract 8 from 136, you remain with 128. Who is the majority? It is 128, who is the majority? And if democracy is all about the majority, the members that were present can symbolize the majority of the SPLM NLC members. So we went on with the meeting without the, the group that had boycotted <coughs> the sitting. And we went on to discuss and to amend the draft constitution of the SPLM. <coughs> this group, in the evening, it was possible that they adopted the constitution. The group father went on to discuss the recommendations of the investigation committee, which was headed by Comrade Jemi Guaniga on the case of Comrade Pagana Moon, the Secretary General of the SPLM and we, the committee recommended that Comrade Pagan should be removed from his position as the Secretary General and in any other SPLM positions that he was holding. It was deliberated on by the, by the NLC and they approved the removal of Comrade Pagan Amon from his position as the Secretary General and any other positions that he has. <laughs> it is now the chairman, myself, who have not issued the order of you know, implementing this you know, uh, resolution of the National Liberation Council. I personally do not know that the group absented itself from the meeting because they were planning for a military coup. I thought they were, they were thinking of other things, maybe mobilizing people for demonstrations and, and, all, and so forth. That was my thinking, that if, suppose I was the one who thought of this, absenting myself from there, what is the option that I should take? Manatu, I could go to the people to mobilize them and go out for demonstration. So, before we could close on Sunday evening, 
somebody came driving near Nyakron, opened his car window, and then started shooting, releasing some bullets. He did not injure anybody, but you know, shooting in the air, and drove away with a very high speed. That is uh, how events started. In the night, <coughs> when it was about, I don't remember, 20 past 10 or half past 10, past 9. Okay. Uh, fighting broke out in the old Vieira Genovia, which is now being occupied by the presidential guards. And that fighting uh, went on. It was the mutinies that have started. Of course, you know. In any, in any military coup, if you control the, the barrack of the presidential uh, guard unit, then you, 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 you can take power. There is no problem about it, no, no, no question about it. So they know that it is the presidential guard's division that they must start from. And that day when we were in, uh, in Yokoran, a lot of money was taken to to the barrack by daytime and was given to some soldiers. Others who were not given were so stupid to keep quiet. They had, you know, and they started asking themselves, you know, the guru is that you know the Nazani, Mabu was the Nazani. And they did not come out by daytime to say a Jamaat these people are distributing money to soldiers. So this is what happened. When this group did not take the, the barrack, <coughs> fighting erupted also in the military, in the FPLA general headquarters. And these two concurren concurrently went on. You would hear fighting in the presidential guards headquarters. And after a while, you will hear that there was fighting around Bilfam Barracks. But in the night, uh